Hi folks, welcome to lesson one, quantitative chemistry with Priestland Science. Uh, same lesson format as per usual. Uh, if you need to pause the video and go and get things from show my homework, now is the time to do that. Uh, you're also going to need a periodic table, which I have attached to show my homework. And you're also going to need a calculator. So if you haven't got one, go and get one now. And then we'll start with our first retrieval practice. So pause and retrieve. And the answers are here. So you can pause and revise. And then we have our second questions here, which is P1 energy. So you can pause and retrieve. And then the answers are here, so you can pause and revise. And finally, we have B1 health and infection. Uh, so pause and retrieve. And the answers to those questions are here. So again, you can pause and revise. Uh, today we're going to have a look at calculating something called relative formula mass and you're going to need two different documents. One of them looks a little bit like this and then there are the practice questions which look a bit like this. You can pause the video later and come back to them if you need to. So I'm going to switch you now over to the camera. Okay, so here we are. So I have a few questions. Some of them you have certainly done before. The first question says, is what is an element? And the answer to that question is a substance. Made from one type of atom, a substance made from one type of atom. The next question says, what is a compound? And the answer to that question is substance made from two or more atoms. So it's two or more atoms, but there is an important bit on the end which is chemically bonded. So those atoms have to be bonded together. Then we've got a table which has some uh, chemicals down the left hand side. What we're just going to do is make sure we can distinguish the difference between counting elements and counting the number of atoms. So here I have the chemical formula O2, which you'll recognize as oxygen. Uh, so the element I have there is O, which stands for oxygen. So I've only got uh, one element. So that's my number one, the one element. The number of atoms, this little two down here, indicates that I've actually got two atoms. So there is one element, which is oxygen, but there are two atoms of oxygen. Then we have Cl2. Cl2 is chlorine. Um, the element there is Cl. So we've only got one element. But again, because there's a little two after it, the little two means that we actually have two atoms of chlorine. Then we have our third compound. We have um, carbon dioxide. And you can see here we have. C and then a capital O that represents carbon and oxygen, as I'm sure you know. So that is now two elements. But if we count up the number of atoms, I've got two oxygens and one carbon. If there's no number after an element, it indicates one. So two plus one indicates three atoms. Then we've got NH3, which is ammonia. Now that's made from N, which is nitrogen, and H, which is hydrogen. So that's two elements. And then if we count up the number of atoms, three hydrogens and one nitrogen, 
So three plus one is four. Then we have uh, hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid if you dissolve it in water. So we have HCl, so H, and we have Cl. So that is two elements, but also there are two atoms because both of those elements have no number. No number indicates one. So one plus one is two. Then I have HNO3, which is a hydrogen nitrate or nitric acid if we dissolve it into water. So we have H, we have N, and we have O. So that's one, two, three elements. But then if we count up the number of atoms, we've got three oxygens plus one nitrogen plus one hydrogen, which equals five. And then we have H2SO4, hydrogen sulfate or sulfuric acid. Uh, we have um, H, we've got S, and we've got O. So that's three elements. And then counting up the atoms, see if you can do it faster than I can. Uh, we've got four oxygens, one sulfur, so that's five, and two hydrogens, that makes seven. And then slightly more tricky because you can see some brackets here. Let's do the um, elements first though. We have Ca, we have O, and we have H. Those are three elements. But then we need to be a little bit careful with these brackets, same as you would do in maths. Whatever's inside the brackets, you times by what is outside the brackets. So if a two outside the brackets, inside the brackets, we have one oxygen and one hydrogen. So times both those by two, that would be two oxygens and two hydrogens. That's four plus the calcium. That's five. And lastly, the hardest one. Again, let's get the elements listed first. So that's Fe, C, and O. So again, that's three elements. But I've got to do this a little bit more slowly. So we have, uh, inside the brackets, I've got one carbon and three oxygens. We're going to multiply both of those by three. So that gives me three times three, which is nine oxygens. And then there's three carbons. So that's nine plus three is 12 plus two ions is going to be 14. I hope I've got that right. Check it for me. Okay, so that's the process really of looking at identifying atoms and elements within a compound. Uh, we're then going to move on to our last questions on this sheet of paper before I give you some practice on your own. So I've got a question there which says, what does MR mean? And MR equals or means relative formula mass relative formula mass that's what it stands for now underneath well, we're going to learn how to how to work out relative formula mass this lesson it says how do you calculate relative formula mass it's very simple you add up the mass numbers of all the atoms in a compound. We add up all the mass numbers of all the atoms in the compound. So I'll show you how we do that. Maybe two examples. So here we have two examples. Calculate the relative formula mass of two compounds. This is magnesium chloride, MgCl2. So we've got its formula. So we're going to write MR, which stands for relative formula mass of Mg. Cl2 equals, now I'm just gonna list what we've got. We've got one magnesium here, and we've got two chlorines. One magnesium, two chlorines, and then we're gonna put in the mass numbers. You need your periodic table. So we've got one times the mass number of magnesium. Magnesium has a mass number, top number of 24, and we also got two times the mass number of chlorine, which is two times 35.5. So then we will just work those out. Fairly simple, one times 24 
is 24. 2 times 35.5 is 71. You simply add up those two numbers and we end up with 95. So the relative formula mass of MgCl2 is 95. Our second example is uh, H2SO4, so I'm going to do it underneath. So MR of H2SO4 equals, well, here now I've got hydrogen, so I've got two of them, two times hydrogen. There's sulfur. I've got one sulfur, so it's one times sulfur. And I've got four oxygen, so it's four times oxygen. So this equals two times the mass number of hydrogen, which is one. And this equals one times the mass number of sulfur, which is 32. And this equals four times the mass number of oxygen, which is 16. And then we will put those in order. So two times one is two. One times 32 is 32. Get your columns lined up. Four times 16 is 64. So I'll put those in there. Add those up and you would end up with 98. So that's the process. That is simply how you work out relative formula mass. I want you to do it this particular way uh, because they do get a little bit more complicated. And as they get a little more complicated, um, it's useful or important to have a consistent method. So you should be able to switch now to the practice questions. Those practice questions are here. So you might have them in written form or you can do them straight from this screen. So have a go at them, uh, work through them, sh show you're working out, and we will check your answers. Now the answers to the questions are here, so you'll be able to check your answers. Also see if you made any mistakes, check to see where you got your numbers wrong. So that was uh, questions uh, A to E. We've got F to I are here, so they're the slightly easier ones. And then we have a slightly harder set of questions as well, which I'm sure lots of you had to go at. Uh, the answers are here. And the final answers are here. So, well done. And I will see you for tomorrow's lesson.